cube. It's time for cube. So right now, uh, it's the modern cube on uh, MPGO. I usually don't touch the modern cube, but I figure it's been a while enough, and there's been they keep doing changes overall. Want to give it another roll? I know that the modern cube tends to be where. So when we're playing the vintage cube and we're playing the legacy cube, a lot of the times we talk about the unfairness of a deck or a deck with an unfair plan or unfair parts. And that's generally shorthand for cheating cards into play, cheating mana costs, playing above the curve, things like that. Modern Cube doesn't really have any of that. I think, like, basically any, any, like, you know, you, you don't have any um, super fast reanimation, show and tell level plays, channel effect. Um,. Things like that. So, so you don't have a, a huge amount of unfair decks. Like, you're not, it's not literally every player. Um, there's, there's still a few things that are the ideal of it, you know, cheating mana costs, things like that. But they're, 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 they're a lot more reasonable. So what, what tends to happen is we have a format that's less about... Uh, playing your your power plays as quick as possible and more about like value anyway let's go ahead and we want this league we want jump right in we want cube yeah so we're gonna do this i think we're gonna do a couple of these and then i'm gonna go do one more sealed on arena i think that's my plan for today is do a pair of these cubes and then do an arena sealed uh, not necessarily in that order. We might swap it around, and it depends on how we're feeling. Um, but that is generally the plan for the day. So, happy to see you. A number of people have already made it here. Uh, Resident Art Rooms, Karen, Hydrate, Anybody about Shabadoo, uh, make that round. So what is in this cube? Uh, well, the modern cube is called the modern cube for a reason. Uh, it is modern legal cards. Uh, that is to say, cards from 8th edition forward. Uh, the idea is that it is supposed to evoke a modern power level. Um, there's a cube list you can find um, if you search... Oh, God. I don't know how to get to the site other than searching daily MTG, even though that doesn't get... Like, that doesn't work. It, like, doesn't mean anything anymore. But Magic the Gathering's main website has an MTGO site, and on there you can go ahead and check out what the full list is. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump on in. And I think a few packs will get across the power level better than I could talk about it. Uh, yes, we want to join this league. 2,000 players, that's about half the size of the other league. And we are immediately in the draft. Good. All right, um, so this is, again, more of the power level of things we're looking f at in here. You can see we're looking at, uh, we, we have th two or three cards that stand out immediately in here. Um, but just to talk about power levels, you know, you're going to see that, like, we don't have full duels, but we have, like, Rav Duels fetches. We don't have Swords to Plowshares, but we do have Path to Exile. We still have all the creatures that are big busters from most recent memory. Um, I'm looking at Nissa as one of the most powerful cards we can take. I'm looking at Path to Exile as a very uh, flexible card. I'm looking at Search for Ascanta as a very flexible card. Uh, two of these are kind of value engines. One of them is a uh, basically the best piece of removal we will see. Um, my gut, I think I might go with my gut, though. Nissa just feels so powerful. If we can get Nissa early and play around that, that'll be a fun way to go. Cube! So we'll see what sort of green we can get around Nissa. Nissa goes well with a lot of different colors. We don't need the next more ancient. Collected Company is an option. The Scarab God is another big buster. Scavenging Ooze is powerful. Uh, Voice of Resurgence is also quite powerful. Um, collected company this early. That's a hard one to work around 
but this is where we'd be able to like pick it and work with it. We would want a pretty high concentration of three or less drops to make cocoa a thing. We can also pick up the next bloom ancient and just go straight to 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 um, infinity uh, because we tap our forest for like infinite mana with next bloom ancient in play. Um, Voice of Resurgence is cool. That card used to be like forty dollars, like forty fifty dollars on release. It was incredibly powerful. I just want to go with Scoos. Do you want to go with? Go big. Go big. I don't know what our payoffs are. I'm gonna go scoos. Now Garrick is a pay. Ooh, look at this Pop. stuff here. And I guess there's a you know, there's a little settle. Okay, so no red. That's notable here. We're also seeing a lot of strong black. We're seeing a lot of strong um. Uh, there's some strong white in here, Lingering Souls, and Settle. Settle is one of those cards that's very hard uh, to to kind of play around. You know, you, you can't just not attack in a lot of decks, if you, even if you know it's there. Uh, Picking Garrick would get us this more concentration of green big walkers. I like Go for the Throat. I like Shriekma a lot. Um, I like Settle a lot. Like Overgrown Tomb. I feel like black might be what our secondary color is. But I like Garrick a little bit too much as well. Uh, that's why I'm thinking... The big thing here is that gr this is the only green card and we can keep cutting off the green. That feels like a success for us, even though it's likely what somebody else is doing to us. All right, if we want to pick up some ramp, we do have Everflowing Chalice available. I love the Eldest Reborn. Ooh, that is a card I have... A ton of love for this is like an infinite value engine and by that I mean it's a three for one it's not infinite um, but the value it gives on it, its biggest thing reviving a planeswalker is really big stuff steel leaf champion is another one that could really get going here we could get like a especially like with Garrick as a draw five or just as a really really aggressive play say we do get some land of elves in our deck there are, I think, four or five different variations on Llanowar Elves that exist here. So, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with this green cutoff. I don't like how little green is in these packs. Makes me feel like somebody else is cutting off the more uh, specific green stuff. But we keep seeing powerful green things, so I don't feel bad about it. All right, Drusil, thank you very much for the sub. Cube, we'll pick up more Garys. There's a Gideon there as well. That's a strong contender. Uh, though Gideon and Garrick actually do a very similar role. Um, like, they both have zero mega 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Gideon is a little better at being aggressive. Um, we're not seeing... This is a little different here. I like the... Like, like uh, red has started to reappear. Okay, pick up. Again, we want the ramp pieces to make this work. Okay, this is where I, I, I kind of figured this would go. Because we're seeing singular green cards, uh, getting cut like this does not really surprise me. So what that means is we need to decide what our secondary is going to be. Do we want to pick up the Domri and try to go that direction? Do we want to um, pick up Profane Command and go with the Black Direction? Um, picking up the breeding pool would be a way to go as well. Um, not huge. Like, the Domery is a bit of ramp, but it's a weird bit of ramp. It's also, like, um, haven't seen a lot of red. I'm going to go with the Profane Command. We've been seeing black a little more. And, I, like, the red was kind of cut early. Ooh, this is some strong white again. Um, and... Of course, Obstinate Bailoth. Obstinate Bailoth is, one, is a card that just kind of eats Liliana for breakfast. Um, this is some strong white. Both Thraben Inspector and Condemn are cool cards. Um, ultimate, I don't really care about Erebos. I don't think that's our direction. Ultimate Price, however, is not bad at all. It might have just been thin to start. I don't know. Like I'm not... 
super impressed by what I'm even seeing right now. Okay, okay, Grim Lava Mancer is definitely better than than what we've been seeing before. Anyway, I do feel like Black gets us this removal site uh, pieces that we're really happy with. Check out, we got approach. You know, you're the one, so you kind of have to like play smart with it. You know, this is gonna be our first pack on the comeback. Get a red cap. We can get to read the bones. Um, eat, nobody ever just like eating the bones. Uh, that's that's good stuff. Red cap also has strong removal power. I'm always a fan of red cap. We don't have anything that immediately like makes it over the top. Having some card draws, nice. Let's get this and let's get like Shriek Ma back. Coco? Oh, we're not quite a Coco deck, but I'm fine picking it right now. Let's go ahead and set it aside. Hello, hello, hello. Huh. Hold on. Settle back. It makes me feel like I picked the wrong color side, even though white wasn't on the thing. I'm still picking up the Shriek Maw because I love the Shriek Maw, but oof. Sure, let's grab that sword. Crux of Fate is a Wrath of God. Unburial Rites gives us a reason to maybe do this flash. And Bailoth is a fine final pick here. Let's get. Okay. We have one thing that makes this deck, and we don't have any of them yet, and that's one mana mana dorks. We need to be able to ramp, or else this deck doesn't really function. Um, we need Lanoir Elves, we need Elvish Mystic, we need Arbor Elf, we need Noble Hierarch, we need um, Elves of Deep Shadow, etc., etc., etc. This is not a pack for us. Not really. I'm not very happy with anything I see here. Um, Avengers Fine, it's a little too expensive for my tastes. Vampire Hex Mage is a card I basically never play. Um, it was tough to figure where we want to go here. Yes, I'm okay with Beast Within here. I'm just not impressed by Avenger in the deck we're building. Like, we currently don't have any ramp pieces, and that like, no way to get up there other than, like, Nyssa. Uh, no, no, Deny is a bad choice. Uh, anytime it's, like, uh, hate, especially hate pick, pick, pack one, pick, uh, pack two, pick one, that's, no, 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 no. Especially, like, we don't, we're not even playing against the, the players in this uh, set, right? This is a league, so... Even in, even if I was playing with eight players, uh, these are good cards here. I wouldn't hate draft th this early. I would pick something that's li liable to be playable because hate drafting just doesn't function. Um, what's, what's the better way to put it? You're giving up too high a percentage from your deck to minus such a minor bit from your opponent like and you're also this early you're causing like causing confusion just lands everybody else in weird positions that don't don't benefit you um okay this is the genesis wave Um, I think find finality is maybe more our speed. Yeah, Kavanaugh puts it in a much quicker way. Hate drafting a card that helps you in one seventh games in a pod versus a card that could make your deck better is is not like a those aren't equivalent. I want Eternal Witness. This deck is missing Eternal Witness. I kind of like Eternal Witness. I like a finality though. Having sweepers with our walkers seems like a good place to be. Wouldn't be bad about having Bluffstruck Beast as well, but we don't have a lot of 1-1s one that that works with. Rick Sage, Rattleclaw Mystic, Garrick, Apex Predator. That's not... I think we can just table that. Hey, Wildfire, how you doing? 
Next Age is new. Radical Law Mystic is also something worthwhile. Um, just having literally any. No, I don't. I do not care about that Garrick Apex Predator it'll table. That's that's super easy. Even if it doesn't, I don't care. I don't like that Garrick too much. It's a little bit too expensive for my taste. For not being Karn. We need to be able to get to these, so I feel like the Radical Mystic, even being like a kind of weak mana dork, is still worthwhile. We really, really need the one mana mana dorks, though. Like, they are the the deck. Like, without them, this deck is very, very poor comparatively. What do you do? I don't even know. This is a card I know I've seen. Oh, sure. Reanimate. Okay. Cord. Assassin's Trophy. Ronus. They don't have a lot of creatures, but the ones we have are pretty... Are like, you know, they're okay. They are okay at doing it. Trophy is, like, removal we will play. Yeah, that's just fine. Thrun. His like Quagmire speaks out to me here. We need some fixing. We passed up on a um We earlier passed a um 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 Overgrown Tomb. So like our fixing is going to be hard to come by. So anytime we have something like this, we kinda need to to, to grab it. Uh yeah, an immortal son a son to own goal. This seems like an easy pick here. Hey dog. Carries that was pretty fine. Like some tireless tracker, that's a good card. What the hell? What are you doing in here? Sure. Threads, I like threads. Azeroth's cool. Sword is obviously pretty neat. I like tracker though a lot. Tracker lets us, uh... I don't really, I don't know, I don't really, like, I, maybe it's my, my feelings from Vintage Cube, but... The more I played Vintage Cube, the more the swords felt unplayable. Like, just unplayable. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it. Like, anytime you were including a sword in your deck, you felt like you were making a mistake. I'll take a green signet. That's pretty sweet. And yeah, also, like, what am I equipping? Right now, I don't have enough good targets for it. Steel Leaf, I guess, is our best. I want the Signet. I really need these one-mana mana dorks. This next pack's gonna be pretty uh, necessary. Um... Rex Sage on the wheel, sure. Cord on the wheel, sure. This deck still just doesn't work without, like, Cord is kind of weird in our deck because we have nothing really super good to grab. We only have eight creatures. Wow. Sure. Okay, we got all this two mana ramp, but that's not what makes the deck. It's all the one mana ramp. We have, we have this ramp, but, like, we don't have Llanowar Elves, Elvis Mystic, Draga Tree Speaker. Like, we don't have the one drops. Hell, we have Search for Tomorrow is our only card we can play on one. Uh, so this pack, I want one drop Mana Dorks, like Birds of Paradise. And I want... Um, what's the other card I want? Uh, Eternal Witness. I really, really want Eternal Witness for this deck. We have a lot of removal pieces that move back and forth, and having an E-Witness would make us a stronger deck just in a lot of ways. So, Birds of Sweet here, Woodland Cemetery on a wheel would be extremely good. Worm Coil ain't gonna wheel, but whatever. Um, no, Woodland Cemetery, like, no, no, I didn't, like... So, this is important to get the deck running. Birds of Paradise effects are literally the way this deck functions. Like, this is not more important than birds in any world. Especially, like, we 
this is a deck that really, in order to take best advantage of it, we really want to be playing these walkers on three, like, so that we can get super advantage. That That's the way we're, we're going to leverage our advantage. Without that, this deck is just not good. So... Like Corsair Crufix, that's some good value. Woodful Primus is also a nice thing to pick up here, too. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Is that Obnix? Oh, is that Obnix the, like, generic Planeswalker? Yeah, that Obnix is the generic Planeswalker. I like the blue in here a lot. A lot of lands. This is where all the lands are hiding. Look at this. Five non-basics. That Obnix is the generic Planeswalker. Like... Plus one draw, minus three kill, minus eight win the game, or whatever. Yeah, Corsair is nice. I like Corsair a lot. With all Primus is an option. I'm worried that, like, without Nissa, we're never getting there. Okay, now that's a 7-drop or an 8-drop I'm a lot more excited about. We also have Verudi... Ver... Verdu... I'm going to say Verudius, but it's not. We got a Gear Hulk. Dismember is also an option. Like Big Karn. <clears throat> I think if we're going to have a top end piece, Big Karn is a good top end piece. We have a lot of these walkers, and that seems to be one of the, maybe the defining piece of our deck. They're just playing a Planeswalker control style. Oh, wow, this is a lot of stuff that just isn't working well for us. We're not going to be seeing another one mana mana dork, sadly. Tooth and nail ain't our speed. We don't have any biggies to throw down with it. No, like our biggest creature is literally Shriek Maw. This is this is the most expensive creature in our deck. If that gives you an idea of if we are a tooth and nail deck or not, uh, I guess we could take that Masker Worm. That's probably. Something I could side... I don't, triple Black seems a little bit too much in the main, but I don't like any of the other cards in here. Mind Shatters, uh, maybe worthwhile, but, like, some board dealing with. Jade Light Ranger is nice. Celestia Signet's nice. E-Explosives, Tarmogoyf. Okay, well, you can have all the card advantage we want in the world. Don't remember just missing the thoughts he used to go with it. We are so heavy on that three drop slot. Another Signet. Our deck is all about ramping up to walkers. Maybe that means we just want this Signet here. How you doing? Oh, hey! It's a perfect signet. Oh, okay. What piece of top end do we want, everybody? Sheldred Terastodon. How you doing, Moldrifter? You're my big friend. Um, so, yeah, perfect signet. That's just not for us right now because I think I actually want the Sheldred or the Terastodon in the deck. I think one piece of the hyper top end would, would be nice, I think. We actually do have enough ramp pieces that I don't feel bad about it. Two hard orcs make blue mana. Yeah. I think Sheldred. Ooh, Solemn. I like Solemn a lot. I saw Wolver well, Silverheart. Uh I played this card in constructed. Um It's dumb as hell. You know that gear hook we saw? Yeah, you remember the gear hulk we saw. That was a 5-mana 4-4 four, four that put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Yeah, what if the, that did it twice? This card's not reasonable. 
And like if you if you if you like you you know, you would bond it with the birds and the birds would attack for a four and then you'd have an eight eight. Uh, I do want Solemn though. I actually feel like we want a little bit of ooh Frusca. What is this Frusca? Um, TZ Pirate destroy a thing. Third player goes to one. And then Vivian is similar. And a confluence doesn't harm me either. Uh, sure, slaughter pact. Nobody will see it coming. Okay, I think we're good on the top end stuff. Yeah, we're good on the top end stuff. Actually, too much now. I don't want Woodfall Primus to rest it on Sheldred and all that. Yogmoth any good? Yogmoth kind of wants, like, we don't have enough uh, fodder for Yogmoth. Yogmoth is a good card. Um, Yogmoth has the ability to pay a life, sack a creature, you put a minus one. Yes, okay, shuffling. Put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature, and then draw a card. Basically, the main thing is pay a life, sack a creature, draw a card. The thing is, we don't have... No, we're not the only one in green, because we're missing all the dang mana dorks. I feel like whoever else is in green picked up, like, what isn't... Had already picked up their top end, perhaps. Just wasn't interested. I don't know. I feel like this this is the problem with the deck. This is what I'm... Very concerned about. In order, like, you know, we don't have Draga Tree Speaker, we don't have Llanowar Elves, we don't have Elvish Mystic, we don't have Noble Hierarch, we don't have Arbor Elf, we don't have Elves of Deep Shadow. Like, there's a lot of one mana mana dorks, holy shit. So, we're leaning on birds a little bit too much. Um, we are not a collected company deck, right? Like, we. Yeah, this is what our Coco package would be, so we're not collected company. Could be Crux of Fate. Um, I'm gonna quick put everything else over here. Ahem, over there, and then let's go ahead and... Okay, so... What a top end. We probably need to work out that. Um, a lot of questionable cards up at like six plus. Let's take a look at all these. Okay, so Perfect Command got a little worse because we didn't actually get the E Witness I wanted. That was why I wanted the E Witness was the Perfect Command loops. One of my favorite things to do. Gives you an infinite value engine. Um, but we don't have that. What do we. Modern cube is basically just that. Like, nobody in the cube is playing, like, b b like, you know, nobody's going to be killing you on turn two with Tinker, right? Nobody in modern cube is going to go ahead and show and tell or play sneak attack on turn two after uh, playing Seething Song into it and killing you. Like, there are ways to sneak things in, but, like, th those are not modern legal things to do. So, all right, I'm going to build this in reverse. I feel like that's more what I want to be doing here. Let's, so, first things first. Sort by CMC up here. Birds, you're in. And this is in. Search for tomorrow's in. Yeah. All right, how much of the ramp stuff? We got a couple signets we can play. I don't think I play the Willow Haven. I don't really care about this card. Ultimate Price, Goose Trophy, Eat to Extinction, Solemn. I care about this Bayloth, Street Ma, Rex Sage, Tracker. Triple green seems like it might be a little bit of an issue. But yeah, we can turn one birds, turn two this, but like our signets don't help it. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm just a little worried about Steel Leaf Champion. I'm going to put it on the side. Um, how much turn draw do we have? Let's put Karn in. We'll put in the fine finality. Um, only a couple more cards include. Profane Command and maybe... Profane Command gives us something like to, to do off of like our Nissa mana. Profane Command and like... Frosca or Read the Bones? Frosca's a, God, that's a lot of top end we're getting in there. A little worried about that. Maybe the Read the Bones to try to help out and smooth out the deck a little bit. The black's almost just a splash, you know, I'm looking at it. Like, this could almost just be mono green. Basically we remove we lose the removal. Alright, that's that's what we lose for it. Lose the removal, gain. Yeah, we don't really gain that much. Like, our deck isn't super aggressive, and again, we don't have any of these one mana mana rocks that make me feel better about being mono green. So I don't think we're going to shut off that. And we do have enough fixing that I don't feel bad about it. Search for tomorrow, Birds of Paradise, Solemn Simulacrum. Um, I'm going to put in... Read the bones. Let's do this. Right, and then... Where is... Where's my... It's in Quagmire. 10-6. Yeah, sure, we need enough to get to double black here. Triple green is real, but we have a lot of green. All of our... Yeah, I think the, the, the Read the Bones will actually be quite useful because we do need the ability to like get some card advantage back. All right, let's go ahead and see what we got. Let's see what we can do here. I know we've got a lot of extra removal up here. We got some other top end options, and like we have like this little aggressive package. We also have a another ra just flat wrath if I need that. Five mana destroy all non dragon creatures is effectively wrath of God. Okay, again, my worry with this deck is that we just don't have enough one drops. You know, just having, um, just birds uh, feels like a, a, a little too little. Okay, this gives me a turn three Garrick. I like that. Yeah, this is pretty good. We got double black. We got triple green. We can get that Garrick going pretty quick. Yeah, it seems fine to me. Scoos, I like you, Scoos. Yep, fetch for... Make sure you're having a Steam Vets? Stomping Ground, okay. Yeah, um... I tried to do what we could for the noises. They're still kind of stupid. Look at that Karn on five, that's nice. Alright, so what's your three? How bad is it? Oh, Rabble Master's not too bad. I can just make... If I want to take that out, I could and flip Garrick, but flipping Garrick doesn't really get me much. Probably fine with just making... Did they turn on more of the noises again? I, f I feel like I cut off a lot of these noises. Hold on. You just want the in dual ones. Yeah. There we go. So next turn I get I get a lot actually. 
That's what's the play. If you can get the wolf out of the way. Okay, plus one, plus one counter your team is actually pretty good here. Yeah. Are those all attacking, Garrick? Kind of have to. Cool. So they're all attacking Garrick. This is like a billion damage of Garrick. We're going to go ahead and block the 1-1 one, one and then kill Nissa back. Um... Because Garrick is going to die no matter what box I choose. Like, if I block this, it'll still take three. So, no point in trying to save Garrick here. Okay, a lot of lands. If I go... So I can go... Land, search, signet, scoos, I think. The search brings it into untapped. So land. Search for another forest. Play a signet. Play a scoos. And then let's go kill Nissa before it gets a little out of hand. Okay, now hopefully we can just use Karn to get control back of the game. Minus on Rabble Master and get rid of that. I guess Domri would be a good play for them here. They play Domri. They... Okay. Okay, that's fine. So this is fine. We're going to go ahead and take uh, some damage here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, block there okay and we got Garrick Primal Hunter that also looks real real smart here um that could just be better Garrick Primal Hunter plus gives us a 3-3 three, three, and then their Rabble Master can no longer attack and then we might be able to sit on Karn protected yeah, that's not a bad uh, line. What's the punish there? Flying over and killing Garrick? I think that's the punish there, is flying over and killing Garrick. I like Karn protected, because Karn right now, if I go Karn minus, Karn dies to like any burn spell, and I'm not super huge on that. If the Rebel Master gets pumped again, that's not really a punish because we just chump it with a wolf token and then kill it with Karn. Like, that that's all that happens. It's like, I lose a wolf token, kill this, kill this, and then, like, Garrick is still here and Karn kills that, and that's also their whole turn. So that's the only real bad punish I can see here would be, like, a dragon killing Garrick, and even then I just Karn minus kill it. Like, so... No attacks here. We do want to play a little bit defensively. Um, I could attack with one of the two twos, but I want to leave Garrick alive for one turn here, and then we okay. Fifth, fifth mana source means our opponent's pr likely able to make some real lines here. That opens up like Glory Bringer as something that just kicks my ass. If they just play their own Garrick. I don't feel too bad about it. And this, uh, this is getting Karn minus. That's just happening. Sorry. Get out of here with that. Oh, you're right, you're going to lose some goblins. That's fine by me. Okay, and stop. We're just going to eat your grave. Okay. 
Okay. So this is basically a, a must in my mind. Anissa can't live. Put up a little bit more defenses here. Call it good. You direct sage their signet, that'll help. So the big thing here, if they can kill Karn, they're in a really good position. If they can kill like sorry, no, they're not in a really good position. They they get like to parity, I guess. I think that's that would be very strong for them if they could kill Karn. If they could even if it's just lightning strike, kill Karn. They get to a position where what does Karn do with the cards under Karn? Uh, at minus 14, you restart the game with all of them in play. Okay, we got five. Uh, is this a Glorybringer? Glorybringer is overrun. Wow. That, I guess, lets you not kill my Karn. Right? No. Because of the goblin thing, they'll get they'll get just enough to kill my Karn, right? Hmm. Okay, so that's killing my Karn. So I can't save Karn. Because so so the reason I say I can't save Karn, if I double block the this here. And then I like single block here, block here, or double block here. Two trample, one trample, one, and that's too much. So Karn's dead. Um, I think I just take out the goblin, call it a day, and then draw some cards off of Gary. I think Karn's just gone. So that's all right. Uh, I could take out like their forest with this. I'm okay with that. Like this is this is fine. They just spend an overrun not killing me, which is a good thing. Oh, okay, alright. Well, what if I've got a little bit more up my sleeve, huh? Um, let's just draw cards. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, okay. You can just casual draw six and play a Sheldred. All right. The deck functions. So we have an aggressive token style deck. I feel like the Wrath of God might be where we want to be. Bringing this Crux, maybe even bringing this Massacre Worm. Definitely bringing the crux, though. Not the all is dust. All is dust ain't our speed. Um, but they're definitely a go wide. You know, they showed token generation, token generation, um, and an overrun. So, like, that's enough for me to be like, you know what? This is definitely. Like, because they showed Nissa as well. I feel like the crux is probably where we want to be. Uh, what do we not need then? Yeah, we have all his dust, but we have all these walkers that it kills. It was a late pick. I'm not really interested in the all his dust too much. Unless we're in, like, a really weird matchup. Uh, what do I want out? Maybe this Rex Sage. They didn't show more than just a signet for it. Um, if I make it leave, do we have ways of dealing with problem artifacts or enchantments still in the deck? Assassin's Trophy can do that. I think we'll go this, and everything looked just fine. I think we don't need to make any mana changes. Might want to put another swamp in, but I don't. F I think seven black sources with our three pieces of fixing for it seems fine. Yeah. All right. Let's make it happen. Slow, but I'm okay with this because eat. I like the the curve of eat. I'm okay with this. I don't... Uh, mm. Yeah, it's fine. Horse Recruit is a good card. Eh, Quagmire on one looks good. 
Don't like this many lands with the Corsair, but like, the Corsair's good at making sure we don't draw lands. Really? You didn't grab that last time. You have a new splash. What's wrong? Something's weird. Something's weird here. That's... That's new. I'll suspend that. That's, you're a little late to the party, but you're not too late. What in the world's happening? A new opponent? Hmm. Now I bail off next. That's good. They're also on a 41 deck. There's four in play, six in hand, 31 in... Or... Okay, I'm sure. I guess that... Huh. All right. You know that thing I said about there not being artifacts or enchantments in our opponent's deck? I may have uh, misspoke. Oh, no, I'm not going to draw my Bailoth. That's a little depressing. I kind of like drawing my Bailoth, but I also like getting a land, so... Not really a problem. We need... Or Forest will do just fine. Hey, Crux of Fate, how you doing? Forest off the top. That's sweet. You're sweet. Let's get the beat down in. I'm gonna leave Hissing Quagmire back to block, along with Eat Through Extinction or an Assassin's Trophy. They missed a land drop. They missed their fourth last turn, so they're on top decking lands. That is a dead as hell, uh... Xenagos. That's not happening. Um, yeah, I can just get out of here. No, I actually like reading the bounce here. Okay, they get in for two. They don't get in for two. Card on the top, eh? Oh, I like that. Uh, let's go ahead and read the bounce first. I like both of these, actually. Okay. So, I think the play here is, like, let them equip the sword, go to swing, and then we trophy the sword away and block. Oh, they're five color! What has happened? Whoa! Something has happened. The game has changed. Hey, there's that glory bringer I talked about. Um, I think you're just getting assassins trophied. Yeah, I don't want to lose my courser right now. <laughs> Match. Oh boy. Cool. The other reason I find Assassin's Trophy here, because I don't really, like... I could Crux of Fate to kill a dragon, but it would already kill my Corsair and hit me for four. Um, yeah. Anyway, well, that was... Oh, was some, some game there. Let's go ahead and run in uh, round two. Okay, the deck worked out. I didn't... Okay, so game one, our opponent is like, I am a very nice, you know, well-rounded green-red token deck who plays these cool, you know, Goblin Rabble Master and Nissa and token plans and pump spells. Then in round two, it's like, green! Like, but they didn't do anything with it. They are just like, here's my blue fixing and my white fixing and my city of brass. And... <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and, yeah, I'd like to play first. This looks fine. Red Claw on two. We, get that, we don't get that Garrick for a little bit. We got Black for ultimate price. So then, like, Profane Command. This looks, yeah, this will be fine. But it's on a mold of six, which is the third time our opponent's been on a mold of six. Okay, blue opponent. Rex Sage could do some work here, perhaps. Let's go ahead and get down a Red Claw Mystic. Now we look like the greed, you know? Like, wow, look at this greed. But, like, we're not actually that greedy. We're just kind of playing that for tap for green. Um. Oh, look, it's target for ultimate price. I'm 
JSP at the right now here. Oh, cool. Uh, so we actually go ahead and cast this. Go grab a forest, and then we get the ultimate price. Again, comes in untapped. Good card. Really good card, Search for Tomorrow. Really good card. Okay, so we get Garrick next turn. Uh, that'll be nice. As long as they don't have, like, double blue up. If they have double blue up, I might not play the Garrick. We'll see. I guess they could kill my Rattleclaw, and then I wouldn't be able to kill Gar play Garrick. We'll see. We'll see. Um, hey, Manic, we have a... Uh, Basically what it looks like right here. There's there's nothing Wow. Bonus sure do like SoFi. This time I keep the Rex Age in handy. That's sweet. Anyway. You can stop me from playing Garrick. Wait, do they have a force of negation? I mean I guess if they want to two for one themselves on this Garrick, I ain't gonna stop them. Okay. Mega Beast, pass turn. We go ahead and kill that SoFi next turn with Rex Age. They're not a deck that's going to haste at me. So I'm not going to pay two life for that. No. What the hell you got? Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and uh, play Reclamation Sage. Okay, that means that is a desperation move. Uh, anytime somebody is blowing up your tokens generated from onboard cards, uh, that tells me our opponent does not have a lot of useful abilities against just pussing Garrick. Like, they might have maybe a Wrath or something, but that's very strange. Huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're just going to keep on trying to burn down these, again, generated cards. This card's good, by the way. It's good removal. So one of the things that is like a weakness for the black decks, like, you know, this is like a single target removal spell that also works as a hyper multi-target, which is really nice. Anyway. Um, yeah, here's a beast. I'm just going to keep doing that. Excuse me about that. Mm. Oof. Ugh. Had a not-so-great Tuesday. Don't know what Garrick's ult is. Make a 6-6 six, six green worm for each land you control. Okay, two cards in hand. We got two pieces of removal, even for, like... If they go to Fury. Something like that. Elspeth. We've got answers. If they're just going to keep wrathing, though. Okay, I don't care about Liliana that much. Whenever another creature you control dies, flip Liliana. That's fine. Let's go ahead and target creature gets. Target player, target creature. High level is up. We're going to make you lose 5 life and minus 5, minus 5 Liliana. We're going to plus you. The idea here is that actually pushes us for lethal ear. This pushes them to 8 and then we have 8 power on board. So they have to answer this or they lose. So I can ult Garrick next turn. This is a little too late. Uh, it's also not active because we haven't been doing enough card draw. It's a really good card, but it's a little less effective in this world. So I've got one card in hand. Can I stop them from dying? No, it cannot. Okay, what did we learn? A lot of removal. Which is really bad against our Planeswalker plan. 
So. Okay, we're going to keep in the Rex Sage. Pretty clear there. Um, do I want more? Might want more th like walkers that just generate tokens. Yeah, I feel like they're a decently creature heavy deck. I feel like if I from that look, it's like a blue black like tempo heavy deck. Like that's just trying to go like creatures like bounce kill anything in the way and then get in with like Night Veil Spectre or something. Um, Frasco Relic Seeker is the only card I might want to add here because more cards that are just like card generating might be good. I like this Obstinate bail off in case they do have the Liliana. Shriek Maw might be bad. How about that? Like, I don't know how, like they only had one blue source, four swamps, and a Godless Shrine. So, like, and we know we saw the Jace, so there are targets for that. But, like, I don't want to be holding a Shriek Maw against, like, three black creatures and feel like a fool, you know? Let's go ahead and make the swap. We'll reevaluate that if a game three is necessary. Uh -huh. Yikes, I guess that's what I get. Yeah, let's just go off the top. So the reason I didn't like that first hand is just how slow it was. Our deck has like six ways to ramp and it had none of them to get that Liliana out. And then the next two were like no castable spells, no castable spells on single land and then double swamp. So here we are on our mold of four. Let's see who we can get off the top, perhaps. That obstinate bailout's pretty good. Um, I want my opponent to make me discard that if possible. Okay, and step opt. That's fine. Like anything they saw? Yeah, they did. Maybe they were looking for a land, though. Who knows? Okay, let's get the signet down. And I like the signet. Negate the signet. Okay. Hmm. That uh, doesn't really do too much here, because I'm just not doing a lot. Okay, they need... If they can get, like, down a walker, they can end this game pretty swiftly just by... Okay, so white is real. They even have a planes. So, like, if they get down a walker... Like, they play Teferi next turn, I think the game's just over. Unless, like, Obstinate Bailoff's alive and they have Teferi. I think it's getting go for the throated, though. Yeah, Dude Blade's the same. Hmm, is this Teferi? Okay. Yeah, being able to just like know your own death is some sort of curse, right? With the card advantage engine online, the control player is not going to be losing, especially when we mull to four. Yeah, sure, freebooter me. You're not getting any new information. <laughs> All right, um, I'm still here because, like, we could technically top deck, like, a Karn or something, and, like, we have enough, we have, like, a Haymaker or two that I'd feel okay playing. They have a counter spell up, so it probably doesn't matter. This in Quagmire is not new information. I'm looking for new information. Um, that's what I'm here for. Is th This game has been over since they played the Teferi. Honestly, it was over the moment I hit Mulligan on 7, I suppose. Um, 
Really? Really? You're gonna take six years to kill me? Is that what this is? Oh. I'm reading the bones. They've shown this gear is hard for them to handle. Let's see what sort of counter spells they actually run. <laughs> Seven man, you can't do squat? What is going on over there? <laughs> what is this? You play cards? Sure, Gideon Jura. Everybody's got to tech Gideon. That's fine by me. Alright, this thing's getting close to an ult. That's a little bit annoying. Not really much we can do about that. What is... Okay, I think we kill Liliana, recur our Bailoth next turn. Oh, or we don't even care, because they're gonna... Sure, whatever, that's fine by me. Okay, we get some lands back. We can't stop that Teferi. Bit of a pain. Um, let's um, Minus four, minus four, Liliana, you back my bail off? Okay. Why didn't you leave this back to block? You would have got my birds for free. Hmm. Okay, so we got to attack Gideon, right? Let me... Okay, fine. Not gonna let me leave. Okay, opponent has a billion cards in hand, but they're all planes, so I think we might still be live. The problem is if they actually Teferi ult, that could get a little dangerous. If they go, like, Teferi ult and then, um, wow, their hand is literally just spot removal, right? They're going to spot remove my bail off and then go kill Garrick. No, they're not going to. Okay, they're not Teferi ulting. They're going to wait to try to. Oh, shit, they get to untap that and they're at 19 cards in deck. Okay. All right. We're learning more about our opponent's deck. Um... It's all interesting. Sure, you, you've got a billion way... Okay, so that's going to kill the opposite of Bailoth. Then they're going to go ahead and kill uh, Garrick in combat. Um, yeah. So they seem extremely weak to these Planeswalkers. Look at their hideaway land. <laughs> what do they do against these planeswalkers that just generate value? Like, I think it's menace. Ult that to Fairy. Do it. 
Yeah, all right. We're now fighting Teferiol. So whenever they draw a card, they get an exile. They get to exile target permanent. That is what Teferiol does. Um, yeah, it means this game's super over, but we're still here looking to see what the hell they got for like. Yeah, sure, whatever. That's like cards you play. Uh huh. Cool. Garrick always trying to transform in the grave. Good on you, Garrick. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on. Three. So, yeah, our opponent's just spot removal of the deck. Like, that is literally all they are, is just infinite spot removal for 20 years. Um, yeah. Like, it, it, it's, it's spot removal backed up by, like, Gideon and things. I feel like Beast Within's good here. Um, because we their biggest threats are walkers. We need more ways to just deal with those, even over Eat to Extinction and Assassin's Trophy. On that note, I might not want Obstinate Bailoth in the deck. That's just a magnet for a a a. a Murder target. Sheldred's fine because Sheldred's like. I don't know how much I like Sword of Light and Shadow. I don't know. It's relevant protection. I suppose. I feel like this game is just one off of the the number of like. See, I don't feel like that second part's relevant. Like, I feel like the way we win this is just by having a ton of token generating things in play, right? We're just, like literally the sword's going to be going on a two two token most of the time. That said, maybe I actually want this Wolf Willow Haven in the deck, so I got a little bit more ramp to get up to my token generation as quick as possible. So, like, take out Obstinate Bailoth, take out Shieldred. Like, just don't leave in these creatures that get murdered by a, you know, a, a go for the throat. Leave in the cheap ones, because, like, two in, two out is fine. I think that's all right. Yeah. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and keep this. Put a forest on bottom. Yeah, that's fine. Opponent kept a seven. Okay, so the wolf will even just makes a land tap for an additional green, and then you can sack it for five to make a wolf on your turn. The idea here is that we're just going to try to get Nissa down as quick as possible, and, like, that that's it. We're just going to try and overwhelm them with three threes. Or Garrick down quick as possible. All right, Jace. We're getting down Jace. We're getting down the Signet. I'd like it to be something I can hit with the Rex Sage. Oh boy, I'm gonna get punished for putting that land on bottom. Hmm. 
Yes, we need untapped land next turn. That's four, 13 in the deck. Not good odds. Yeah, and step cover. So that's two and two out. So that's fine. Like, if that were like, you know, if I played Bayloth, that's a lot more of a loss. You know, or like, you know, tempo loss. I want them to play sword here or tap out for something. Sure, that's enough that I can, like, resolve a Garrick. So we just need to draw. Well, you know what? That gets what we need. And is very good against their uh, spot removal. Yeah, let's go ahead and use Solemn's ability. And we are going to go ahead and grab a Swamp. We already have triple green in play. This is good. Solemn is quite good here. Okay, I feel like this is somebody holding up a counterspell. Seven cards in hand. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to them. I'm, well, I need them to tap out for a walker or something like that. Well, even that, like, if they tap out for... Hmm, that's a bit of a pain. If they tap out for, like, Teferi, they can still get me on it. No, I'm just going to let's, let's let them have it. I'm not paying too life for that. Okay. Okay, I think at this point that I am going to start slamming down some plays. Okay. Yeah. Sure, it's not too bad. Yeah, so you should triple block there. Okay, so we're going to wait to play Tracker until we have a land. Um... Search for tomorrow is not a land. If they, if I, it doesn't. No, um, because their hand right now is like three copies of Doomblade. If I go Tireless Tracker and then play Search, they just kill it in response, and I, I lose all the value off there. So we're, we're absolutely not doing that. Like their hand right now is literally Doom. Like their hand right now is like Doomblade, go for the throat, and like a land and a negate or something like that. I feel like this Garrick's getting countered. Wow, really. I feel like they've, they've got to have, like, all the kill spells in the world, though. I thought they might have had it in the gate still, off of leaving up that double blue, but at this point, we just need to kind of push. All right, um, sure, Serum Visions, that's fine by me. But yeah, Tyler's Tracker, I'm just waiting until we draw a land. That's that's the, the wait here. Then we'll, at that point, we will play Tyler's Tracker, we will play the land, we will search for tomorrow. And hopefully they just go kill it in response, but from there, like, we'll still have a clue token off it. And hopefully... <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Sub. Okay, I'm gonna play the birds. 
They didn't block with Soldier, which tells me they're not just going to be Wrathing me on this turn. Unless they top deck the Wrath. Sure, Chupacabra. Again, this is their deck. This is, this is all they've got. Oh, that's a nice one. Um, See, now, we have infinite card advantage forever. Uh, leave it all back to block for the Mo. Let's force them to have Finale if they want to kill Garrick. Two cards in hand. Sure, I don't really care too much about Jace at the moment. We're going to be killing Jace, is I guess more the, the real thing here. Um, here's minus four, minus four of the board. Power's Tracker is an unreasonable card. Um, combat. <laughs> and then we just go like actually Vain command, return, screws, target you, one, two, three, four. Could play that signet, but I want all the skews activations. So the reason I want Scoos is that they have the finale in their deck, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, eight. Terminus. All right. Um, you don't get that. But again, like they can't deal with the walkers. Um, you don't get that. You don't get that. You don't get. Timely render replacements. Okay. So I'm empty handed. I any order. I don't care that. So the, again, the the finale returns all creatures from their graveyard to play if it's X equals ten. So I don't want to let that happen. Uh, well, let's go and make a beast. <laughs> Like, you can wrath all you want. They, our opponent has a lot of problems answering walkers, as we've noticed. Let's go ahead and read some bones. 
Yeah, I don't want either of those. I want some action. Sure, we'll just get past all the lands. Okay, this will leave up Eat to Extinction. This will leave up a clue token. This leaves up a lot. But I also could just pick up some action if I want. Like, we can just use this to double pick up two creatures. That is a mode on this card. Is double raise dead for for <laughs> for two. So, like, if we just want to pick up... Well, Liliana, you don't really do too much. I'm probably not even going to answer you. Yeah, like, what if I pick up, like... They terminus most of my creatures. No, that's that's not the text of this card. Turn up this is double raised dead. Um You might be thinking of find a broker, which is a permanent. Like, which is also very similar. I'm going to go ahead and crack a clue here. So we can't get back Tracker. We can't get back. So, like, let me pop out my grave because it's a little small for you to see here. here. The Terminus got rid of a lot of the targets we would get. So, like, right now, all I can pick up is Solomon Birds or Solomon Rexage. And I just don't feel like that's worth picking up. We already have enough of a clock here that I'd rather just keep this as a wrath. Yeah, it was Terminus. Bottom of deck, all creatures. So, yeah, we don't really have all the creatures that we want to have. They top deck a land. Uh, it's fine. I don't care. That's yeah, a match. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, was, I didn't want to kill this because 2-3 is completely irrelevant. Like, if they play Teferi, that's a much better ink to extinction target. You know, things like that. So, anyway, that's round two. They took that game, the literal null to four, but we got there. Terminus rules. Terminus is a sweet card. All right. I like the changes we made in the deck. I like that we identified the weakness our opponent has. Um, you know, we, we went through and we realized, like, our opponent's weakness was just these token generators. And we, we made the changes in order to, to push those a little far. It was minor what we got, but wow, this is just not not our day on the sevens. Um let's move along here. This is fine. Unknown opponent. Unknown opponent, I'm gonna put ultimate price on the bottom here. Let's let's go ahead and this is just ultimate price bottom. I don't know what our opponent is. If they aggro the hell out of me, I'm going to feel foolish. But, like, this hand is really quick. Okay. Gato. Grab a steam vents. All right. They got a lot of fixing. That's good for them. They are Grixis. Okay. That means that... No! Goodbye! Alright, fine. Somebody found one of our weaknesses. Casting Duress. I just about F6 through that turn. Just want you to know that. Um, next turn, we're just going to play Tyler's Tracker and play the Swamp, because we will have another Forest. Okay, Shriek Bomb might be bad here. Depends on what their main colors are. Could be a good surprise for him, who knows? Solemn's nice here. Like. Whoa, Strider! This is a cool card. So, Whoa, Strider is a 3 2 that makes a 1 1. You can sack anything for a scry 1, and then it has a good escape. It gives you a way to use your graveyard as a resource, and it comes back as a 5 4. Okay, so let's go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and resolve our search for tomorrow. Yes. Cast this, please. Grab our forest. Play our tireless tracker. 
So they don't have a kill spell immediately for it. That's good. We're not going to get it in combat, obviously. We need a clue. Next turn, Solemn gets us another clue. Um, And then... Or if we draw into a forest, we get Garrick Primal Hunter, which looks really good against our opponent's current position. Getting Garrick on four is pretty strong. Getting it on five is fine, too. Let's see if they've got something like a Bliss here. Probably just discard the... Oh, it's Gonti. Hell, oh, that's always an annoyance. We've seen the power of Gonti in the Vintage Cube. It's not as powerful here, because cards aren't as powerful. But they still have this here. So... That's from their hand. Okay. All right. They're, they're tapped out for the round. I like this. I'm actually quite happy about this position. So that Slaughter Pact, we can't, like... It'd be hilarious if we could, like, get Terrasted on and get him or something like that. But, like, even if it's just Solemn next turn, I feel pretty good about our position. If it's not, then we if we get Garrick next turn... Oh, that's funny. Um... Shriek Maul looking hella bad in this matchup. We'll probably find, like, one target for it. So, yeah, Swamp there, sadly, not what we wanted. We did want Forest, but we only run six. The odds of that are not worth making any changes, obviously, especially because we can just tutor that. Um, yeah. The Shriek Maul might be killing this, whatever this is. Hopefully this isn't, um, a walker. I would be really annoyed if that was, like, I don't know, untap Nissa would suck. Okay, they, but they're tapped out this turn. This turn they get nothing. They're tapping everything but that Steam Vents or that Swamp. You lose the game. That's what the Slaughter Pack does. Okay. Good choice. I'll block your woe strider. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll block your woe strider. They didn't block with, with Gonti. Craving Tar Pit, very good at answering Garrick Primal Hunter. Play this forest in case a spell pierce is a card that exists in our opponent's hand. Let's go ahead and play Garrick. I'm gonna make some beasts. So it doesn't immediately die to that that tar pit. Um now we have good. We have a good board. Two cards in hand, plus one. So three cards in hand for our opponent. Um, I gotta get a clue and unstep here. That'll be nice. Again, that tar pit might be coming in. That's something we want. Like, oh god, how do we deal with that? That's difficult. Ultimate price is monocolor. Um, Shriekma obviously can't do it for, like, 12 reasons. Um, let's just activate. Oh, hey! All right, yeah, okay. What's your top of your deck? Cool. Jeez. Peace within can hit Lance. That's a good one. Owned by Slyonite. All right, they're gonna... Oh, right, they can always sack things to scry. Oh, shit! Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy, they've got both of them. All right, uh-huh. Liliana looks better in our opponent's deck than the last one. Liliana with Woe Strider is like a real combo. Wow, you want that land that bad, huh? You got it, boss. How bad do you want it? I mean, you can't sack the Woe Strider to itself. <laughs> so, a languish, huh? All right, let's go ahead and get our clue token. I see. I'm going to wait one turn on that. I'm not going to play Sheldred now. I'm going to wait until they languish my board. Because then it'll be a lot more powerful. They're also holding up, like, like, uh, 
Like, I know it can only really be Mana Link here, but I want to wait till they languish before playing Shieldred. Okay, let's try one. Hold on. Whoa! What? Hmm. They must be trying to resolve a Grave Titan? I'm not going to play the Rattle Claw anyway. They want that six land so bad. Like, they, they must have some six that must change the game entirely. How powerful could a six be? Uh, like, the Grave Titan's the only thing I can think of. What, they can, like... So Sheldred, funnily enough, against the escaped Woe Shredder doesn't really do what you want. I think that's what they're doing. This lets them scry a billion more times. Hey! <laughs> All right. Have fun. All right, we're gonna do the play. This is what we call the move. Hi, my name's Shieldred. I'm gonna draw cards. Cool. All right, full grip. And we have a Shieldred in play. Good old Tap Spiral of Canal just don't get there. So they can kill Garrick, but that that's not the problem right now. Um, yeah, they're not even going to show us what they were trying to get into. Sheldon into draw six is... um Strong? I think it was strong. Okay. Um, Trick Ma's bad here. Now, they don't seem to have the same problem with our token generators. They're not as bad against them. Do I still want to go into Wolf Willow Haven? Because, like, they can duress them away. They can. Do I still want to go into Wolf Willow Haven? Do I still want to go into... Um... And again, people have mentioned the sword as a possible move. Kind of like the Wolf Willow Haven here. I like the ability to get our bombs on. The Beast Within also does matter, I think, here, because we need to, like, they might have some more things that we need to answer. Oh, yeah, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and get that. We'll, we'll take the Bailoth out until we see something that we want the Bailoth in for. Uh, we could think about the sword if they're not, if they're heavier on ways to answer walkers, the sword gets better. Right now, we've only seen the, the Creeping Tar Pit, which is a little too slow for me to think that they can't answer walkers. Created step trigger only opponents. All right. And Wolf Flow Haven keeps getting work in our openers here when we board that in. Yeah, I'm in. Okay, let's see what sort of thought sees sort of... Nope. Untap Spire Bluff Canal. Uh oh. That's way too good.
Okay, so we get to eat the bones, which is actually incredibly good here. Um... Like, eating the bones is super, super strong right now. Because we, we've just ramped twice. Yeah, so strong they will negate. Because, like, right now we are on five mana. So anything we draw is online. Like, I get to play this card liberated in turn here, and that's going to feel really good. Uh, let's see what their play is on four. Nothing, all right. Our play on four is likely the same. Well, oh. all right, let's, uh... Let's get Garrick down, shall we? If you want to show me more counter spells, I'm fine with that. Because more counter spells means Karn resolves, right? And if Karn resolves, well, I've got hyper bad news for you, you know. Resolved Karn is a problem. Capital P. Tap out, please. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, you got me, boss. That is the perfect counter to my position. Nothing could have gotten me more than that did. Um Yeah. It's quite bad. Could pop the wolf well hollow, but that would get us off of children mana, and I don't want to do that quite yet. Well, damn. Okay, well, let's, they don't have double black. They do have a six drop, though. Is it, like, Consecrated Sphinx? Maybe that's what they were digging for. Chandra! Can't be countered. Throw some emblems. Sure, that's fine. Sure, that plus two for an emblem? Yeah, that's annoying. Cool. Get out there, I'm a swamp. It's a different dog. Okay. Yeah, I can't beat Vampire Nighthawk at the Mo. That's fine. Hey, birds. So we're on a 20 turn clock. This is just hits you for one every turn. Two cards in hand. One more, like, a bomb out of us can turn this game around, and we're not even in a bad situation yet, so... This ain't too bad yet. But it's still got a lot of cards left in hand, but they're not really doing too much that's like Haymakers anymore, so... That's decent. I can flashback that... Not much, actually. Alright, let's take some damage. Well, I guess we're, uh... Getting this out of here. Keep, keep on the beatdown. We're technically losing the race. Five turn clock versus six turn clock out of us. Okay, that doesn't flip Jace. That just loots. But their hand is obviously a bunch of lands right now, so looting is very strong. Yeah, their hand right now is garbage. You can tell because they went Jace pass on eight mana. Their hand continues to be garbage. They might have a counter spell, and that's maybe the only live card in their hand. Okay, so Jace will flip next turn, and then... We get burned for a thousand? That's quite bad. Yeah, sadly, our opponent did a very good job of stopping our relevant plays. 
countering the read the bones is like the best is like an extremely heads up play that they made because they knew that they were going to be trying to wreck us, return our hand away, and thus drawing cards is just not what they wanted. All right, so this flips. They again get rid of a land because their hand is still garbage. But they can just like flashback Rakdos' return for like seven right now, right? Yeah, for like seven, maybe eight, and then I die. <laughs> yeah, there's still a Chandra token. Sure, I'm still taking two. Here's the hope that you're plus in that Jace for no reason. Sure. Ooh, check it out. Our opponent's got a real play. Damn. That thing's big. Let's take some damage. Speaking my language, huh? We're still dead. I'll take... God, we need to kill that Jace. And I think their hand still has a counter spell, so I think this just doesn't work. Yep, okay. That's, that's what we call game. We, can't, we die to this attack plus the flashback. Okay. Uh, our return kicked our ass. Okay, Shriek Ma is still really bad. Ultimate price is good. I had a lot of monocolor targets for that. Eat to Extinction gets work done. Um, is it the enemy cycling lands? I hope it's enemy cycling lands. With, with like, basic land types from Amonkhet. That's what I want. I wanted that cycle to be finished. Um... Rex Age. Oh, that's way... Hold on. That's not... That's not Amonkhet tools at all. Huh. <laughs> that's broke... The, the, what? What? Okay, sure. All right, uh-huh. You said land types on a Tarkir Trilion? Okay. Are they wedges? Yeah, they're, they're... Yeah, I saw the ultimatum. I've seen a lot of the spoilers and stuff. Um, God, what do I want here? A lot of cheap counters out of them, too. It's a bit of an annoyance. Let me do try this sword. Yes, I'd like to play first, and... I can't keep a hand that looks like this. I... I can't... I cannot keep a hand that looks like this. This is a mulligan. I can keep a hand that looks like this. I can just get rid of a signet and call it good. Now, if I play the Rattleclaw Mystic, that actually might have opened up a little better Courser, like, uh, Signet into Courser line, but I'm trying to be a little greedy and make up our card disadvantage by playing Courser here and getting a land off the top. Oh, they've got to remove... Oh, my God. All right. Extremely punished for that move. I just wanted to land off the top of my deck. 
Yeah, okay. All right. Yes. You you uh-huh. I stand by the move and would do it 100% of the time. Um, let's resolve some creatures then. Yeah, you can get that. You can get that. Yep, all right, they are heavy on the... Okay, so it didn't matter. They had the Essence Scatter anyway to make me a fool. Um, so I got my sword. If I draw a land, I can equip sword, get in. If I don't draw a land, I can just equip sword, and that's it. All right, and if they do that, I just get nothing. Okay, they're missing land drops, though, so that's not bad. Oh, wow. Ha. All right. Answer my birds. You got to spend a removal spell on birds. If you don't spend a removal spell on birds, you, you, you get knocked out here. Come, here it comes. Here comes Doomblade, right? No? Damn, hell yeah. Give me that's coos. Ouch. Ahem. Nice. Okay. I don't care about Rakdos Return. Our board is killing our opponent. Like, they also have no mana. Like, I don't... That card is blank. That card is useless. That card doesn't do anything. So, like... If they Rakdos return us, they don't answer our board. We just get to pick it all back up and, like, they spend their entire turn and they don't have enough mana to make it worthwhile. Like, there's four reasons I just don't care about that card. Uh, so I moved the sword over to Corsair Crufix because they did show us um, Languish. That's why I didn't play the Ooze on the turn. I had the Ooze playable because I didn't want them to Languish. Of course, now it's safe to play, but... Um, we're going to go ahead and just get on in there. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get a scoos down. Um, that's fine. Just a skews. We're going to wait for them to take any action, and then we're going to resolve Karn Liberated on them. That's the game plan from here. They're going to have to do something to stop us from winning the game in the next two turns. At that point, we slam Karn. Okay, fifth land. Gives them a double black. Means that they do have an active, like, uh, Languish or something like that. That's not too relevant. I can just fight that down, which I probably will. That's... I don't agree with that. <laughs> this is still... I, I, like... <laughs> you know, I, I might give you that War and Peace has, a, like, a failure state, but... Uh, tends to be doing a lot more than this sword ever does. Okay, we want their Grave gone because they do have Jace and such. Okay, land up top. We are just swimming in it. Hmm. 
Negate. Negate. Okay. Breathe the Bones on top of the deck is really good here. Hmm. Again, glad we didn't go over the Karn. They did have that counter up. We do want to resolve this Karn. They still have five in hand. This is not a, like... The scheme isn't fully over. Like, that many cards in hand in, uh, in the hands of a control deck tells me that they still have options, right? Like... There's still moves left to them that could get them out of this. Even just something as quick as a damnation gets them into an okay position. Problem is that that Read the Bones on top of our library is real good. They can attack us for two life on that Vampire Nighthawk. and probably will because it ain't doing anything on defense. So I will take two. Main two, you got anything else? What's what's the Do we have a damnation? Yeah, we got the double pickup from fight if we got that bad of an issue, but like Doom Whisper. Oh, I, I think we just carn that. I don't really care. You playing lands off the top? Now, how much life do they want to pay? <laughs> you can't pay much. You put creatures in your yard. That's real bad. You can only really afford one payment here. You'll lose if you do any more than one. I think you can afford one payment. You should pay two life once. Of course, if you throw two creatures in your yard, this game's over. So don't do that. Okay. Oh, they found a card they like. Sure. All right, let's see if they've got, like... Because, like, they can rack to us for a turn, kill Karn, but they die on board, so that doesn't really do anything. Um, they'd have to have more follow-up than just rack to us for turn on Karn. Um... Uh, what could they play that would be relevant here? Like, again, some sort of, uh... Not if they Rakdos return. They can't turn on the Fumeral to block. Like, they, they can only turn on the Fumeral to block if they, like, literally do nothing, right? Like, they, and that... That's just buy a turn. That doesn't do anything. So, like... That's why, again, that's why I don't really care about... So, yeah, okay, what do they got? They got some six Inferno Titan... Okay, Inferno Titan, take Karn out. That's not enough, right? Yeah, that's not enough. I think I can kill. I can just go sidestep it. Like, your life total is two. Right? Like, even if you attack with Vampire Nighthawk, like, it don't matter. So even if they have, like, you know, Slaughter Pack to don't stop this. All right, that's game. That's trophy.
Um, yeah, that's that's it. How does the bird hit someone with a sword? Um, well, let me... Uh, squadron Hawk Sword. Somebody already answered this in the form of, um... An image a long, long time ago. That, that's, that's how it happens. Gets you with the sword. It's like that. That is, somebody else did that. I, I, sadly, I don't know the source on that because it's ancient and it doesn't have a little. It doesn't have a, a, have a name at the bottom. So my apologies to to the the artist on that. But that's the one I know. If you just anyway, let's move on to to, to round two of the cube. We're gonna do again. I said we're doing two modern cubes. So we're going to take a very short break, then we're going to come back and do uh, the second uh, Modern Cube. And then after that, we're going to go do some arena. So I will see you on the other side of about a, let's say, a couple minute break. Everybody get up, take a stretch. You know, just, just relax a little bit. We'll get ready to go for round two. <laughs> 